Hi, I'm Jacob Wagner. In this video, I'll be demonstrating all the different types of cloners and the basic settings. When you first open up the Cloners Plus Effective panel, you're going to see this. The panel is going to be completely empty because there are no cloners in it yet. Creating a new cloner system is very easy. Everything you need to do is to select the layer that you wish to clone and then click the big plus button that says Add Cloner. When you do that, you get the default cloner setup, which is a linear cloner with five clones in it. I want to take a moment to talk about what actually happens now. The first thing you'll notice that happens is, of course, that you get the five clones, but you also get a, another layer, which is this layer down here. It's a cloner layer. The cloner layer contains the settings for the cloner. And all the clones are tiles of the cloner layer. So you can drag the cloner layer around and all the tiles are going to follow with it. Right now, we cannot see the clones in our timeline. And that's because all the clones are being shied. And this shy toggle, if we click that and untoggle it, we can see that the clones are now visible in our timeline. The vast amount of time, you don't need to actually do anything with those layers. They're being controlled by the cloner system. So I recommend that you keep this shy, and that way you can only see the layers that you need to worry about. If we want to, we can rename the cloner into something else. Right now, it's called Cloner 1. That might not be very descriptive. So let's give it another name. Maybe we can call this Demo Cloner. And that's totally fine. You are always allowed to rename the layers that the cloner system creates. Only thing is that you cannot give it a name that already exists. If I was to rename this cloner layer something like circle or square, which already exists, then that would break the system. If we look up here in the cloner at the left of my arrow now, we can see that it still says cloner one. That's because the cloner panel doesn't actually know what's going on in the scene. Not before you roll over the panel. As soon as you do that, it will look at the scene and it will realize, oh, you actually renamed it now to demo cloner, so I will update accordingly. So the panel always updates once you roll over. And here is a little notice to the CS6 users. Everything in this plugin works in CS6, except from the automatic update on rollover. You have an update button up here that you can click to update the panel. Okay, let's dive into the settings of the cloner. If you select the cloner itself and you go into the effect controls, we can see the different settings for that cloner. In case of the linear cloner, they are very simple, of course. You can control the distance on the x-axis and the distance of, on the y-axis. If you want it to be completely vertical, you just put in zero in the x-axis. And we're now going to have a vertical line. So very simple and easy to use. If we look at the panel here, we have a different set of settings. The first setting is which kind of clone do you want to have? This is the patterns that you can use. Right now, we are using the linear, and we're going to look at the other ones in just a second. Underneath the type, we have properties. Those are three properties that should look familiar to you. The one is just the visibility of the cloners, so we can switch them all on or off at once. The second is motion blur. If you wish to switch off the motion blur, you could do that. And the third one is whether or not you want the layers to be 3D layers. 
you might have noticed I skipped the persistent seed value. And that's because when you change that, nothing is going to happen because all of these layers are 2D layers. If I want to use 3D, all I need to do is switch on this little toggle button. And now I can also control them in 3D space. What you need to notice about the 3D mode is that it's a little bit slower than the 2D mode. This is both because After Effects is handling the 3D layers a little bit slower than it handles 2D uh, layers, but it's also because that the, the, the cloner system will need to have more expressions when handling 3D layers. So everything is going to be a little bit slower when working with 3D. This is why this is off as a default. And I recommend that if you're not working with 3D layers, just switch it off and everything is going to be a little more responsive. So I'm going to jump past those two parameters right now and go down to the count which is, of course, also pretty obvious. That is the count of how many clones you like. Maybe we want to have 10 clones. And just adjust this a little bit so we can see all of them. Then below the count, we have a big button that says Use Selected Layers. This is for changing the layer that we are using in our, in our clone system. So. We have a square layer here, just a normal layer. If we want to use that as the source layer, we just select it and click Use Selected Layers. And we're now using squares instead. We can also use both our circle and our square by selecting both of them and clicking Use Selected Layers. And it's now going to iterate between them as it says in the cycle setting. We can change this from iterate to random. And it's going to be randomly picking which, uh, which layer to use uh, where in the cloning system. In this case, uh, we get a pretty weird random result. Let's try something like 100. And you can change this seed into different seeds to get different results. So in this case, 300, that's the seed I like. That looks pretty random. Let's have a look at the next type of cloner. If you go into this and choose radial, the radial cloner has a little more settings than the linear cloner. Firstly, we can change the radius of the circle. We can set the start angle or we can change the end angle. We can also set the offset of the circle, essentially rotating it around its axis. And if we put an offset, we can also use offset variation, which offsets the variation at a random degree. So we're going to get those randomly distributed around the circle. And then of course we have the random C to control which random result we get. I'm just going to reset this for the last setting. The last setting is called align mutation. So when this is on, then the clones are going to be aligned to the rotation of the circle. If I switch it off, then they will no longer be aligned. Let's switch that on again. The radial cloner has the same settings in the cloner setting. So we can change the count or we can change, maybe we want this to be iterate instead. And maybe we want to have it only eight. The next type of cloner is a grid cloner. The grid cloner creates a grid of clones, obviously. And instead of having a count, we have a count for each of the three directions, so X, Y, and Z. In the settings, 
We also get those very simple settings where we can adjust them on the X and on the Y. And if we have more than one in here, let's have two. We can also control the distance on the seed value. Let's try changing this to a different view. Right. As you can see, the 3D is automatically being enabled once you create more than one on the on the seed axis. Now, this is probably a good time to talk about performance. This plugin works by creating layers in After Effects and controlling them with expressions. And because of that, this system is just not built to handle hundreds of clones or thousands of clones. This is for more simple setups. Usually I find that I can handle up to 50 clones and that will be fine. But when working with the grid cloner, you really need to think about how many clones you're creating. Because if you put in 10 in each of these, you are essentially going to create a thousand layers, all with expressions on them inside After Effects. And After Effects is not going to be able to handle that. So be a little careful when you put in values here. You don't want to create a thousand clones or even just 200 clones. That would be way too much for the system to handle. Let's just set this one to, uh, down to one again and switch off 3D to look at the last type of cloner. In the type, I'm going to change it to cluster. And when I do that, it seems that they all disappeared, but I then get my, my source layers back. But what's really happening is that it's still doing clones. It's doing as many clones as I originally had source layers, and I had two. And then it's going to position them exactly where they originally were. So if I turn on my source layers here again, and I drag them somewhere else, maybe I want to position them like this. I select them and click use selected layers then this is now where the clones are going to be. So you might wonder what's fun about that. Not much, but it will be once you start to add effectors to it. So I'm going to talk a lot more about the cluster type when we get down to the tutorial called Working with Shapes and Illustrator. That was all the basic cloner settings. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.